Time to head to Indo. The wind's died down a bit. Just saw my first alligator scamper into the water off of that beach over there. Goodbye. Just arriving here at Telekmaranti. The Bono has come and gone upstream. I don't know how far it goes. I don't think it goes much farther past here. But it definitely breaks around this corner. Super interesting. It's a tough day of paddling. Ever since I've gotten into Indonesia, told people that I was heading up the Kampar, uh, people have been warning me about the Bono. Literally translates to truth. It's also known as the Seven Ghosts. Basically, they're warning me about a tidal bore wave, which became popular in the surfing world because it has occasionally overhead, if not double overhead, waves that even barrel. And these waves will travel upriver up to 25 kilometers, if not more. And you can surf for that long on one of these waves if you're lucky. So I have seen images of these massive waves breaking and guys getting barreled, surfing for a really long time. I've also seen images of the waves crashing onto shore and just causing like destruction on the forest. Just seeing the power of this tidal bore wave. And I also heard these surfers talking about, you know, it was a great wave except for the giant crocodiles. So I understood why people were warning me about it and saying I was crazy for attempting to do it. I also had an idea of when it was going to be big, when it would be breaking. That was usually only on a really high tide. And also, because it's not the season, there's not a lot of water in the river coming down. I knew it wouldn't be too big. But that didn't stop people from warning me about it. And as I started getting closer, I started asking for some more solid information in terms of how big it would be, what time it would be breaking, where it would be breaking. And it was really hard to get a good answer. One person would tell me that it's going to be a giant five meter wave. Next person would tell me that it's going to be like ankle high or below my knee and it's going to be safe, no issues. And then the next person would tell me that it's going to be three meters high and breaking and that it's super sketchy. So it's hard to get valuable information. But you can hear that. That's actually the noise of birds. Um, I believe it's swallows of some sort, bench swallow maybe. But no question, like people continuously warning me about it and me knowing that there was potential danger to it ended up sort of just eating at me and causing me a bit of uh, nerves heading into it. Today was the first day when I actually saw it and saw like how it could work and what it could do and I realized my timing on when I thought the tide was going to come was a bit off. My tide charts weren't very accurate. Finally when I did, the tide did start pushing up, it came fast. It started pushing uh, me like easily 20 if not 30 kilometers an hour and I was coming at it from one of the angles beside this island and uh, basically the tide was pushing over this sand flat and there was no water wasn't connected to the main river flow at that point so I was getting pushed towards the front of it where it looked like I was just gonna with my kayak get pushed right onto the dirt in front of the wave. So I got pretty scared at that point and I sort of paddled away from it and then paddled to the side where it was sort of just slowly spreading. It was pushing that way but also sort of slowly spreading to the side as it did that. And I just waited it out for a bit and when I did that I, I saw the seven ghosts off in the distance. Uh, sure enough, like I, it was hard to tell how big it was because it was at least a few kilometers away but I could see waves breaking and I could see the ocean mixing with the river and it looked like just a mess and I could tell that if when my sort of tidal flow mixed with that bigger one that it was going to just be a big mess of water and I would risk flipping my boat and so I held back because um, I waited it out until the water looked a bit more calm and just sort of paddled behind the uh, those tidal bore waves and it took, it was a, it was a long paddle day, it was probably five hours of paddling to, to get where I am now in Telekmaranti, which is sort of the, the headquarters of where people leave to go surf this wave from. There's no surfers here right now, well, apart from the guy who runs the sort of surf camp and I just met him. He's a, he's a good guy, awesome guy and he wanted to take me out surfing but it won't be good again until uh, two days from now and uh, usually he goes out with the, with the motorboat so I don't think I'll be doing it unfortunately. I could probably paddle out a bit and get a little bit of a wave on a longboard but I sort of want to get up the river 
while I can and, uh, and get to some ocean surf waves on the other side of Sumatra. So I'm gonna make a push for that. Should be over there in Krui by the end, by August. Big day, good times. Something uh, behind me in the grass here just uh, got really bothered by the fact that I paddled by it and it went row, row, and then it went grrr. Didn't quite sound like, it started more sounded like Ur. Not so much like a dog, more like a Sumatran tiger. I doubt it's a Sumatran tiger. Maybe you can see it behind me, is it spying? Can you see it? Oh, maybe I shouldn't get so close to land. Oh, keep my distance. I just pulled up to this town here and they have convinced me to stay. And there they all are! <laughs> Three year anniversary today, Tiga <laughs> Tahu! Awesome! <laughs> 